Sunday, I used the phrase, white blessing, for which I'm deeply sorry. Horrible choice of words. Does not reflect my heart at all. I don't, to be clear, believe there's any blessing in slavery. To the contrary, when I'm trying to understand and help people see. Yeah. If the phrase is the trip up, let's get over the phrase and let's get down to the heart. Sure. Let's get down to what then do you want to call it? And I think maybe a great thing for me is to call it white blessing. You little black buck, you know what time it is. Uh, I told you guys about part two of the Lecrae and Louis Gilio and Dan Carthy uh, video, Blessed um, Community Church. Um, and we're going to really discuss about racism within the church and where we need to go from here on outwards. Hey, if you're new to the channel, do yourself a favor. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you got to do me another favor. You understand? Do me another favor. Go down below, click on on the you ain't you got the minerals by b merchandise baby grab yourself a hoodie grab yourself a t-shirt you understand and also click on the shade it's light come back make sure you get your merchandise baby use a little black button 91 tag to get yourself 10 percent off so guys before we go any further i want to let you know again this is living bread not living not living tea this is living bread not tea, you understand? Um, so if you came here to eat on the tea, it ain't gonna happen. Um, but I want to just start with a little prayer and then let's go into a bit of a word, a prayer, worship and a prayer. Um, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for you for the opportunity to speak life into situations. Lord, this idea, this um, particular fight of racism has taken us on a new corner when it comes to churches. Father, we thank you for the, that we have this opportunity to discuss and to be able to analyze and speak truth about what's happening um, in amongst us, oh God, in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven forever. Thy word is set in heaven forever. Oh Lord, thy word is set in heaven. He could not hold in captive, even in the grave. He Even in the grave, he is Lord. Said one more time, for death could not hold in captive. Even in the grave, he is alone. For death, it could not holding captive I said even in the grave he is alone while so it magnifies alone yes and my soul praise his name yes for he even death, even death, it could not hold in captive. Even in the grave, he is alone. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God. Um, thank you for this time for worship, Lord. We just want to pray that, Lord, let's begin to speak on this issue of Lecrae, uh, Louis Giglio, and Dan Coffey. I pray that, Lord, I'll do it justice and not speak out of turn. Ah, Father, thank you. So, um, in dealing with it, um, racism within the church, I think one of the really tough things about this conversation is that white people need to get educated. And I think this is one of the really biggest issues we're dealing with here. Now, I watched a video where Louis Giglio came and actually apologised for his comment that he made about white privilege um, and white blessings. Let me just um, quote to you what he actually said because I want to really just delve into what he said. Um, he said, obviously, um, that um, he doesn't believe he has blessings. 
but he said it to, he, said, he didn't, yeah, he said he doesn't believe he has blessings. But the thing is this, um, he, what his explanation was at the time was that he was saying this word in order for people to get over this word that would stop people from actually um, being able to have this conversation, right? Uh, it actually built up the framework for the world that white people live in yes. and lived in. And so a lot of people call this white privilege. And when you say those two words, it just is like a fuse goes off for a lot of white people because they don't want somebody telling them to check their privilege. And so I know that you and I both have struggled in these days with, hey, yeah. if the phrase is the trip up, let's get over the phrase and let's get down to the heart. Sure. Let's get down to what then do you want to call it? And I think maybe a great thing for me is to call it white blessing that maybe to move forward the whole point was that he's trying to reclaim a word that was going to cause controversy with another word that would cause even more controversy right now i don't believe he didn't mean to say what well. I, I i'm not saying that i don't i'm not saying that i believe that he's trying to be intentionally racist or anything like that but a lot of times racism isn't trying to be on purpose racist you just hold racist views right and and as a racist mindset and a privileged mindset you see the very thing that he was saying that he's trying to change about white blessing was a, coming from a place of white love y'all obviously i'm not okay with you know changing white privilege to white blessing that's a privilege in and of itself um but you know man. now this is going to show us that listen in the church there are many of the sheep who are leaders who will not be overtly racist and tell you nigger to your face because they don't believe in that i told you in my other video about hillsong i said if you're a Christian born again, you're not coming to say nigger to me, all right? What you are going to do, though, is you're gonna, you may hold certain racial views about black people, which is why I said it's very difficult to be in a multicultural church and how difficult it is to have a black man at the head of a multicultural church, but it's easy to have a white person at the head of a multicultural church because black people assimilate all the time. Because black people are used to assimilating in this country. Black people are used to submitting to white man in this country. White people ain't used to submitting to a black man in this country or black women. In fact, if we had more black leaders in the churches of multicultural churches, maybe we'd see some more change. But the problem is they wouldn't submit. They wouldn't go into those churches because we'll be too predominantly black, apparently. But there's no culture that's predominantly white, is there? There is. We live in a land where the culture is predominantly white or Eurocentric or American, whatever you want to call it. There is a culture that exists in this particular church, right? So having these discussions about um, racism just shows how much effort and education is needed from the leaders who are white, all right? Um, and that's no beef with them. It's just let them know that ignorance can't be tolerated in the season no more. What did I just say? Ignorance in this season can't be tolerated no more. It can't be an excuse anymore. It reminds me of Moses in the Bible. I remember when I was young, people used to preach that Moses had an identity crisis. He never. Moses knew exactly who he was because his mother was actually the maid who was actually helping him and actually was curating and injecting and, and releasing information into Moses. Till one day he saw his brethren being attacked by the Egyptians and he knew what side he was on instantly. Deep it. Moses at that point knew exactly what side he was on. When people are, white people are saying that we are their brethren, what do they mean by that? When they have a multicultural church and they got blacks and whites, what do they mean by that, right? It's easy to have a multicultural church when the black people are assimilating, right? But it's hard to be in a, a, a black leading church or, or, or to be a multicultural church where the black leader is there because the culture of a black person is unaccepted by white structural institutional racism which taps in through white privilege and white supremacy. And so this all goes back to history. I'm gonna take you through history because when I begin to explain how we got here, the psychological trauma that happened, the black man and the black woman were placed in a field and told they can never become leaders. Why? Because if you were a leader, you would own something. When you begin to own something, you're going to begin to have power. They were also said they couldn't be educated. So now, deep this, can't own, can't be educated. We're raping your missus as well. We're taking away your kids and you have to serve us. What does that do to our psyche? That puts what the psych, what that puts into our psyche is that the black male is just a brute and a beast. Now we see the images later on after during June, after just before the Jim Crow's and stuff and like that, where you see the black beast, the minstrel coming to rape the white damsel. Right? We saw it in in Tulsa, 
in Tulsa um, in the 19, was it 1940 or whatever, where there was a complete massacre of black people because one black kid was accused of raping a white woman. Why? Because the imagery is that a black man is a beast and how dare he, how dare he think about even touching one of our white women. And now so the same kind of thought process exists even in church leaders who are unaware of the education that they need to, uh, to remove the mythologies, mythologies, the mythologies that are in them with themselves, the structural mindset that is in them. I keep telling you, listen, you can have as much Jesus as you want. There is a time for education and a time for knowledge that helps to eradicate certain prejudices and opinions that we have. Even me as a Christian, I had to unlearn certain prejudices and opinions that I had towards sexual violence. I didn't understand. It was a power thing. Yeah, very much like you guys at the beginning when I first when I first heard about sexual violence or even sexual and rape and stuff like that, I was like, I was like, blood. What is it to do the way the way they dress? I bet because girls are going out drunk late. I held some stupid ideas, right? Dumb. Until I had a conversation with somebody who's dealing with sexual violence, and they had to educate me out of it. Here's the thing: the white church needs education. I'm sorry. Those of you who are white who think you're okay because you treat black people good, you don't know prejudice. You're, you know, there's some prejudice in your mind that you don't realize. Because if you weren't so prejudiced, you'd be fighting for us. The same way that I'm now realizing, oh, I've got so much privilege, I need to fight for my sisters. No, 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 I can't. No, no, no. <laughs> I need to fight for my sisters. If this is what's going on in sexual violence, I need to fight for the sisters. We're, we're, you see, the passion to defend those who are obviously in need of just, you know, justice is because, like I said, it doesn't affect white people. And so... You know, these situations that are even happening, there needs to be education within the church, right? I've done another video where I spoke about the fact that what we can do to move forward, and you, I'll put that up as well today. Um, so there are things that we need to do as a, as a body of church, but in regards to, obviously, the apology that he did, you know, just relating back to, obviously, the fact that, um, you know, he said, um, you know, he asked for prayer, and, you know, he, uh, you know, he appreciates the opportunity to be able to apologize. Today, and I ask that you would pray for me, and possibly even join me as I just desire to continue to learn. Here's my thing. I don't mind that. I can work with that. If someone can tell me, listen, I apologize. I made a mistake. I want to I wanna be able to, to work with you guys to, 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 to help me. Pray for me as well to help me do better. Listen, I, w I want that. But this, is, but this just shows. This just shows that, listen, how quickly it turns when you're uneducated. Because you say something ignorant. Now, and I'm using the word ignorant because it means to be, to, to, it means to be without knowledge here. Like, do you know what I mean? To be in the dark. I'm not saying he is an ignoramus or anything like that. No. I'm saying that there's an ignorance in the sense of the lack of knowledge and naivety here, right? And so the Bible says the lack of knowledge by people perish. That's why we're here. And so what, we, what you're realizing is if he even can get it wrong and say something that's so mad, um, that shows you that there's so much work that needs to be done. There's so much work that needs to be done. So much work that needs to be done in order to in order to get us back to an equilibrium in terms of obviously having blacks and whites looked as looked upon as equals, right? Um, and there's a conversation that no one's really having, which is that even as this goes on, it trickles down even into interactions in the church and dealing with and, and also a, lot, a lot of people talk about multicultural churches, but they don't talk about the effects of how a multicultural church also because of a culture and because of the people in it, how they, how black men and women are assimilating can be different. And so even again, remember how um, black men can, I've already said this on videos, where they can be more attracted to white women and because of obviously uh, information that's been passed to them, they're, they're growing up, how the environment is, etc, etc. So you put them in an environment where they're around white people a lot, then you put them against black women. Remember how black women's femininity looked like against white femininity? They, it's a tough battle. It's already a tough battle outside of church or in a black church. It's another tough battle when you're in a multicultural church where white femininity and white people don't even realise it's compared against black femininity. And, 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 and people keep talking about kingdom culture, kingdom this, kingdom that. Your kingdom stuff is great, but you need to understand you're still a human. You live in this world and therefore you have ideas, thoughts that begin to perpetrate into action. Do you feel me? How many, how, how many of you guys have been praying for years and still you're still prejudiced? <laughs> you, you're still racist in some, some of your thoughts. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about. I wanted to end it on Lecrae's kind of situation as well. Um, uh, many people were talking about, obviously, how Lecrae didn't come hard at Louis, Louis Gagel. If you watched a full interview, Lecrae handled it well. 
because he spoke quite eloquently about other, the issue about it and spoke, he didn't check it at the time, but sometimes you can be so phased by a situation, so stunned that someone could say that, you don't even react in a way that you think people should normally react, right? And what I saw with Lecrae was that he tried to educate them as the conversation went on. He tried to present ideas, tried to present certain thoughts towards them. And I always say this, that if Lecrae is there, there's a reason why he's there and not me. Because maybe me, I'll be militant. I'm just sucking everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's getting it. Everybody's getting it. You know what I mean? Mad in the duns. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, guys, uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe um, if you like what we do. Um, I think with the, with the church, I think situation, what we are, we're needing for very hard conversations. Let's talk about some real stuff. You understand? Let's talk about the history of, of racism. Let's talk about the fact that there was a gynecologist, um, Mr. Mr. Marion Sims or whatever, James Marion Sims or whatever, who operated on black women while, without anesthetics. Let's talk about those things. Why? Because it, what it does, it makes white people realize your history ain't clean. It makes them realize actually there's some stuff that went down not long ago, Jim Crow laws that went down. It makes them realize obviously that reparations in UK were paid to slave owners and not to the actual nations. It makes you realize that you, as a black person, your life is harder and, and made harder by a system. And then people perpetrate the system and actually um, support it unwittingly. Let's talk about those things. Let's talk about how difficult it is as well. So that you understand as a white person that as me as a black person, we're not considered the same. That we don't hold the same value in, in life. That, that, that way society looks at us, it's not held the same. And once we can get to that level, we can begin to have a proper chat. You understand? When you understand what I'm feeling, you can understand what chat we're going to have. Um, so yeah, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell button for the notification of the uploads. Leave a comment down below as well. What do you think? What's your thoughts? What's your feelings? Appreciate you guys. Stay locked. Stay loaded.